Good. Now let's just begin to bring our awareness into our bodies with just a gentle body scan. Start to explore the experience of your body this morning, where you feel this pose. Locate and notice your breath. Good. And then as you're kind of working into this variation of child's pose with the elbows on the mat, the fingertips reaching back towards the back of the shoulders, begin to send your breath a little bit more consciously and aware through your rib cage. Can you expand your rib cage through the sides of the body? And when you exhale, feel a sense of release letting go of any expectations that you have for yourself, for your day, for this practice, just being in the moment as much as you can. Take another inhale and see if we can rise up a little more with the breath, so much that it expands the ribcage and also starts to lift through the space that's right below your fingertips. And then exhale, let it all sink. Do that one more time. Take an expansive breath in through your nose. And when you exhale, explore sinking into the pose. Allow the breath to let you sink. And on an inhalation, we're going to come up really slowly, rising up onto a palm, then the other palm. So we're practicing just cow pose today <clears throat> to just get ourselves nice and warm. Fingers are spread wide. Now on an inhalation, we're coming into cow pose, dropping the tailbone up, or drawing the tailbone up, dropping the navel down, and then gazing upwards. Take a moment to pause and observe how you feel through your spine, your low back. Now come back to a neutral position as you exhale. Inhale to a cow pose, drop the navel down, you look up comfortably. Exhale, neutral position. Inhale, cow pose. Observe if there are any tight places in the front body, the abdomen, the chest. Come back to neutral position. Do this a couple of times. So inhale, cow. Exhale, neutral. Inhale, cow. Exhale, neutral position. Now we'll come back to our cow pose and see if you can sort of sway your hips a little side to side. Maybe even sway a little through your shoulders. Plug into your thumb and your pointer finger. Press them down to the mat. or gazing down towards the space between the fingertips. Keeping your pelvis tilted downward. So we're keeping in this um, cow pose type lower body and spine. Tuck your toes underneath. Keeping your pelvis tilted downward. Start to lift your hips up to the sky, moving into an intense downward stretch. Downward facing dog is really intense when it's this short like this, so keep your knees really bent. With the knees bent, just take a moment to kind of um, move in your down dog, staying bent with the knees. Tailbone is really lifting up. Low back is kind of sloping up towards the sky. Now we're gonna walk the hands forward, or maybe you need to walk your feet back depending on the position you are taking on your mat. And then from there, keep that sloping action, but try to straighten just one leg. And then straighten the other leg. Good, now we can bend both the knees and then reaching the tailbone higher, press the thigh bones back towards the back of the room. Then from here, place the knees down onto the floor. Walk your hands further forward for puppy pose. In puppy pose, you may not touch your head to the floor. I actually really invite you to try to walk your hands so far forward that it's really <clears throat> getting the stretch through the back of the arms, through the sides of your body. You might start to feel it through your chest. Take a couple of breaths. Take one more in-breath. Nice, when you exhale, we're gonna come forward into like almost like a bit of a modified plank position. The hands are really far forward though, so just go ahead and keep them there. And then from there, we're gonna lower down to one elbow, then the other elbow, and then lower the body down, Sphinx Pose. In Sphinx Pose, we press the tops of the feet down. 
I like to gaze really far down because it just feels so much more spacious for my neck than to look forward on the wall in front of me. Um, but you know your body best. And as we journey through this practice today, I really invite you to tune in to the wisdom of your body. Everything changes, right? Some days are sunny and warm and we feel filled with energy. Other days are cold or damp. That might affect the way we feel in our joints. We might feel energetically different each day. But when we tune into the messages and communication from the body, um, we tune into the quality of our breath, we can stay um, in a place where we're exploring our edge, but we're also um, listening and tuning into that communication with compassion, not forcing our bodies to move too quickly or forcing our bodies into positions that might be injurious. So let's take a deep breath in. And on your exhalation, bring your chin down towards the mat, bend the elbows, place the hands under the shoulders, press up into a tabletop position. When you get into your tabletop position, we'll explore cow and cat now. On the inhalation, draw the tailbone up, gaze high. Exhale, cat pose, round through your back, scooping the tailbone under and pushing the floor away. Inhale to a cow pose. Exhale to a cat. And if you really push the floor away, you might even start to build some heat in that cat pose. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Coming back to that cow pose again. This time we'll walk the hands just a little bit forward. Keep your cow pose, pelvis tilt, tilting down, tailbone high, tuck the toes under. Hover your knees just above the floor. Now reach your tailbone up towards the sky, downward facing dog. Deeper breath in. Big exhale out. Look forward to your hands and step your feet to the top of your mat. We'll take ragdoll pose with the knees bent. Here, take your hands to the low back. Option to stay right here. So the hands are just resting on the low back, the elbows are bent. Another option if you'd like to open up the shoulders a little more and feel like, like to explore the chest stretch, interlace your fingers and then draw the knuckles up towards the sky overhead. The biggest thing here I'd like for you to explore to get a little bit more into the hamstring is to shift your weight a little bit forward. Not so much that your heels lift, but that your hips are stacking more over the heels and the lower abdomen is lifting. And then taking some deep breaths. Relax your hands down towards the floor. On the inhalation, we'll come to a halfway lift. Fingertips can touch the floor if you'd like to place them on your shins. Wherever you are, try to keep your neck long and gaze down towards the floor. Fold forward on the exhalation. On the inhalation, come up into a mountain pose, pressing into the feet, the arms are reaching up towards the sky. On the exhalation, interlace your fingers, Draw your palms to the back of the head. The elbows are expanding wide. Then press your head gently into your hands without arching your back and draw the elbows back to open up to your chest. Stay here for just a couple of breaths. So in this position, I don't know if this is like the like lounging um, in a chair on a sunny afternoon position or um, I'm not sure how you call this, but the hands are, we're just stretching and opening through the pecs. Inhale and send your arms back up to the sky. On the exhalation, bring your hands together at your heart center. Softly gaze down to your fingertips and close your eyes. Begin to breathe. In order to release these places in the front body, which we commonly stretch a ton of the back body, hamstrings, we do a lot of forward folding. Um, so don't be um, alarmed or even critical if you notice today that some of the poses feel really intense. Um, that is very purposeful. We're gonna move through intensity to help release some tension. But, we'll be, <clears throat> but we want to be very cautious and, um, not cautious, I want to say very honest with ourselves today about what is painful and what is just uncomfortable. Uncomfortable, discomfort, we're going to sit, we're going to breathe, we're going to try to stay for an extra breath. If something feels sharp, electric, painful, we're going to tune in and we'll adjust or even exit a pose a little bit early. Okay, so take a deep inhale, exhale out. Breathing in, feeling a sense of connecting to your body's wisdom. Exhaling out, I'm listening, yeah. Tuning in, breathe in. Exhaling out. 
Relax your hands down at your sides. Inhale, stretch your arms up to the sky. For mountain pose, try to reach your arms towards the back of the room, then circle them up towards the sky just to bring some movement to the shoulder. On the exhalation, as you swan dive, be really dramatic. Reach your arms towards the back of the room, and then when you fold forward, the hands can reach down towards the floor. Inhale, come to a halfway lift, a nice flat back. Plant your hands, step it back to a high plank position. Yogi's choice, legs are straight or placing your knees down. Lower halfway down, elbows bend straight back, low plank chaturanga. Inhale is upward facing dog, flip to tops of feet, knees, thighs are lifting, and then downward facing dog, exhale. Take a deep breath in. Big exhale out. Look forward to your hands and step or hop your feet to the top of your mat. Inhale to a half lift. Exhale to fold forward. Inhale, rising up to a mountain pose, reach into the sky. Interlace your fingers and as you exhale, bend the elbows straight out and bring the hands behind the head, gentle lean back into a heart opening back bend. Inhale, the arms reach up to the sky. Exhale, reach the arms back as you swan dive down towards the floor. Inhale, so halfway lift, create some space, looking down, plant your hands, step it back, high plank, legs straight or knees down, lowering to chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Breathe deeply in. Exhale it out. Step or hop your feet to the top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale to fold forward. Inhale, mountain pose. Interlace your fingers. Exhale, bend the elbows. Press the head gently into the hands. Inhale, the arms reach high. Exhale, folding forward. Halfway lifting. Inhale deeply. Plant your hands. Really focus as you lower down. Upward facing dog. Draw the shoulders back. Exhale, downward facing dog. Breathe in. Empty out. Look to the hands. Step or hop forward. Inhales, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, mountain pose, reaching upward. Interlace your fingers, elbows bent. Head comes into the hands gently. Inhale, the arms to the sky. Now tuning in here as you exhale, we're sitting back into chair pose. Take your arms back like airplane wings. Hug shoulder blades together. Interlace your fingers behind your back. Draw the knuckles towards the back of the room or towards your tailbone. Can you press your low back up towards your wrists and forearms and feel that how it engages the core and you're drawing your low ribs in. I'm looking down because it just feels really nice. If you feel any pressure on your neck, try adjusting and tucking the chin slightly toward the chest. Nice, keep your hands interlaced, take a breath in, and then fold forward as you exhale. Release your hands down towards the floor, and on an inhalation, come to a halfway lift. When you exhale, stepping your left foot back into a low lunge position. In your low lunge position, we're gonna keep the fingertips resting on the floor instead of the palms. Keep your back knee lifted off the mat. So on an inhalation, draw your hips and heart forward so we get a really good stretch through the front of the hip flexor. On the exhalation, we're moving into a wide-legged pyramid. Begin to straighten your front leg a little more. It is okay if it doesn't go all the way straight. Inhale back to your low lunge pose, but take your right hand and stretch it up towards the sky. When you exhale, plant your hand down on your mat and step your left foot forward. Inhale, come to a halfway lift. Exhale, fold forward. Rising up into your mountain pose, reach into the sky. Interlace your hands, elbows bend wide, head rest gently into your hands. Inhale, send your arms high to the sky, mountain pose. Exhale, sit it back, chair pose, arms reach back like airplane wings, pause here, keep breathing. Can you widen across your shoulder blades? Draw the knuckles back towards the back of the room, and then let's press the low back up into the hands and feel a little lighter on the feet. Breathe in. On the exhale, fold forward, hands to interlace to stretch your shoulders and chest. Relax your hands down towards the floor and in an inhalation, halfway lifting. 
Step your right foot back into a big lunge position, rising up onto fingertips, and then draw your hips and heart forward, feeling the stretch through the front of the hip. Keep the breath flowing. Maybe you try to crack like just a gentle smile to know that we haven't gone too far. Ha um, rather pyramid pose with a nice long stance. So just straighten the front leg. The back heel is going to be lifted with the length of the stance. Nice. Bend the front knee. On the inhalation, come into a twist. Left hand is reaching up towards the sky. Release your left hand down towards the floor. Step the right foot forward to the top of the mat and inhale to a halfway lift. Exhale, we'll fold. Reach tall to a mountain pose. Inhale. Interlace your fingers, elbows bent, lay back like it's a beautiful day. Inhale, arms reach to the sky. Exhale, sit a back chair pose. Arms reach behind you, interlace your fingers. Take a deep breath in to broaden across your collarbones. And on the exhalation, fold forward, hands stay interlaced. Inhale, hands are released down and we come to a halfway lift. Exhale, left foot is stepping back, low lunge pose. Inhale, draw your heart and hips gently forwards. Take a deep runner's lunge stretch. Exhale, pyramid pose. Drop the forehead down towards the knee. Bend the knee with an inhale, stretch your right hand to the sky, low lunge twist. Exhale, hand comes down to the floor. Step forward, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold it forward. Inhale, mountain pose. Elbows bend, lay the head back, open across the heart. Inhale, the arms reach high. Exhale, sit it back, chair pose, arms reach back, interlace your fingers, take a deep inhale and broaden across your chest. Exhale, fold forward, hands stay interlaced. Inhale, halfway lifting, lengthen through the neck. Planting the hands, step the right foot back into a low lunge. Inhale to that runner's lunge stretch, lift through your heart. Exhale, pyramid pose, draw the forehead down. Inhale, come up into that twist. Exhale, hand comes down, step it forward and inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, mountain pose. Elbows bend, head rests into the hands. Inhale, the arms reach high. Exhale, sit back, chair pose, arms reach back, interlace the fingers, take a deep breath in, get taller through the spine. Exhale, fold forward, hands stay interlaced. Inhale's a halfway lift, creating some space. Step your left foot back into a low lunge pose. Inhale, runner's lunge, draw your gaze forward. Exhale, pyramid pose. Maybe feeling a little more space now. Come into your twist, right hand high, front knee bends, breathe in. Exhale, set the hand down, step it forward. Inhale, halfway lifting. Exhale, folding forward. Reach tall to mountain pose. This is the last one like this. Elbows bend, head is cradled into the hands as you lean it back. Inhale, the arms high. Exhale, sit back, chair pose, interlaced fingers. Inhale, get a little space. Exhale, fold forward, hands stay interlaced. Halfway lift, hands reach into the floor. Step your right foot back. Runner's lunge pose is next. Inhale, the heart draws forward. Pyramid pose, exhale. Twisting lunge pose, left hand high, inhale. Exhale, hand to the floor, step it forward, nice work. Inhale, halfway lifting. Exhale, folding forward. Rise to a mountain pose, reach to the sky. Fold forward, exhale. Halfway lift on your inhalation. Plant your hands, step it back, high plank pose, lowering down to your chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog, feeling some freedom in the front body. Exhale, downward facing dog. Right leg is lifting high to the sky, breathing in. Exhale, step the right foot forward between your hands. And then scoot your right foot to the middle end of your mat. Place your back knee down onto the floor. 
if you can, kind of narrow the stance a little bit more narrow than what you do with a crescent lunge. So back knee resting down, back foot is flat onto the floor. We can stay high into the fingertips and draw the heart forward. If you would like to, you could explore climbing your hands onto the top of your right quad. Now remember, there's no goals. One variation in this pose is not better than the other. There's variations because there's so many variations in human beings, right, in human bodies. So there's lots of ways to approach a pose that you can find the places where you can start to untie your knots. Good, and if you'd like to from here, you can draw the heart up a little bit, bring the hands to the heart center. Maybe we interlace all fingers except pointer finger and thumb called Charlie's Angel Mudra or Kali Mudra, and then you reach the arms up and back. Reach and stretch your fingertips towards the back of the room, and then pressing gently heart towards the sky. Release your hands down towards the floor and half split pose or feeling like hallelujah asana, right? <laughs> then begin to fold forward a little bit. And this is a great place for the coming back to the breath. Maybe trying a little easier, that last pose was intense. Bend your front knee, plant your hands onto the floor. Step it back, three-legged downward facing dog. Take the leg all the way up to the sky. Now, normally we bend the knee and we open up the hips, stacking the right hip on top. So just go ahead and do that for just a second and feel that. Now what I'd like for us to try is to level your hips. Keeping your hips level, keeping the knee bent. From there, you can try what's called a scorpion leg in the downward facing dog. So scorpion leg, it's really important that the hips stay really square. Then you start to bend the knee a little bit more and draw the toe forward. Imagine that you could maybe even touch your toe to the top of your head. You're so close, just kidding, no forcing. And then from there, let's relax that. Now draw your knee towards your nose, under your body, and then bring your shoulders forward and bring your nose forward a little bit, looking forward in front of you. Inhale, take your leg out of the sky. Exhale, draw your knee across towards the right elbow. Inhale, take your leg high. Exhale, draw the knee across to the left elbow. Now dance or bridges next. Spin and rotate on the ball of your left foot, turning the toes to the left. Shoot your right foot through to the left side of your mat, and then you need to open yourself up, stretching your left hand towards the top right corner of your mat. Ease your way back around. Three-legged downward facing dog, take your leg high. Nice work, set the foot down onto the floor. Inhale forward, high plank pose. Option to hold here or lower down to chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take your left leg high as you breathe in. And exhale, step your left foot forward. Coming into a low lunge, walk your left foot more towards the middle line of the mat. Back knee comes down. Untuck back toes. We may need a longer stance. You can always scoot your front foot towards the front of the mat or the back knee scoots back. And here we can stay on fingertips. Other variations, climbing up the palms onto the top of the quad and drawing your heart forward. And try to pause in the variations long enough to notice, is this my edge? There's a difference. Our body has like a true edge. Our egos, right? Our egos think the edge is somewhere else. So sometimes we've got to pause, take a moment to really note, like, is this my true edge? Am I forcing or am I feeling and breathing? Now, if you want to explore the Kali Mudra, the Charlie's Angels Mudra, you can reach your arms up and then really almost imagine that you're like drawing a line on the ceiling as you draw that line back behind you and then point towards the back edge of the ceiling and the wall. Keep reaching, lengthening. Try to stay with it. This is where it gets a little uncomfortable, but we breathe. One more in-breath, release the hands down, Woo, half split. Point the toes up towards the sky, draw the forehead down. But life gets uncomfortable, right? In this whole time of being at home, like you may notice, like you're working through feelings that you may not have had before. There may be some really uncomfortable sensations of uncertainty. There's really not much more that's uncomfortable than uncertainty. So just knowing that as a yogi, we can utilize yogic tools like breathing, 
being mindful, meaning like just being in our bodies, noticing what we're experiencing in our senses, the sounds of the music, the feeling of our breath, the smell of spring, to help us to stay more present instead of getting swept away into future thinking, just being here. Now we're bending the front knee, plant your hand, step it back to a three-legged downward facing dog. Left leg is high. Open up your hip, go ahead and stack your left hip on top of your right hip, drawing the heel towards the right side of the room. Just notice how that feels. Now we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna really square our hips. Look underneath your body, make sure that you feel really square. It should feel kind of even on your palms, both are even, and the foot feels even on the floor. Then from there, we could explore drawing the toe up closer, like you're trying to reach your toe to the top of your head. Try to relax your head down though too, instead of looking up. Relax that and draw your knee towards your chest, bring your shoulders forward. Inhale, send your leg high to the sky. Exhale, draw the knee across to the left elbow. Inhale, reaching your leg up. Exhale, draw it across to the right. Dance your bridges next. Spin your standing toes, your standing foot towards the right, and then push your left foot through. Take up as much room as you can and send your right hand up and overhead. Come on back through, three-legged downward facing dog, set foot down, inhale forward, high plank pose, exhale, lower chaturanga, inhale, upward facing dog, and downward facing dog. Take a breath in, big exhale out, <sighs> breathe in a little deeper, empty all that air out, <sighs> gaze to you, rather let's inhale the right leg high to the sky, on the exhalation, step your right foot forward. Inhale up into a warrior two. In warrior two pose, take a little time. I always like to kind of, I want to say like flap my wings, but I'm sort of shaking off. I like think about shake off, shake off all the expectations, maybe all the things that you carry that really aren't yours to carry, just like set them down, right? At least just for like this pose and then send the arms back out. Gaze softly over your fingertips. Then fold your palms to the sky, stretch it forward a little bit. Reverse your warrior, right hands high. Softly gazing towards the back foot. Front thigh sinks a little bit lower. Half moon pose is next. We're taking the right hand forward and placing it on the mat about a foot in front of you. Um, maybe you're placing it as well, like a little bit to the right. Now, hand, left hand is on the hip today. Flex your left foot and push through the heel. Now, if you can, try to relax the gripping of your toes. Stay right here or try dancing moon pose, bending your left knee and drawing the heel in towards your seat. This is already a really good stretch. Maybe you wanna try reaching for your foot with your left hand. If you have your foot, kick your foot into your hand and gently arch your back, feeling maybe a quad stretch, front body, abdominal stretch. And then let's release, step it back. Coming into your warrior two. Palm flips up, reverse warrior in breath, and then plant your hands, step it back. Three-legged downward facing dog. Take the right leg all the way up to the sky. Bend your knee, now open up your hip, and then start bending your standing leg. So both knees are gonna be bent. <laughs> now it feels a little bit awkward, but from here we're gonna flip our dog, keeping our knees bent. Stay really low to the ground. Maybe even try sitting on the ground for a second. Oh, that feels good, giving ourselves a little break. Now push into the feet and into the hand and start to reach up into your flip dog from the ground up. Reaching towards the front of your room and come slowly back down. Take a seat. You can hang out here as long as you want. Right when you're ready to, let's come on back. Downward facing dog. Left leg is high to the sky, breathe in. On your exhalation, step your left foot forward between your hands. I'm just switching side for the video. Warrior two, inhale. You flap your wings, shake it off. Taylor Swift was so wise when she told us to just shake it off. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Extend your arms out, flip your palm up, reach forward, reverse warrior. In reverse warrior, lengthen up through the top arm as you're stretching back. Doesn't matter what it looks like, what matters is what it feels like. How do we feel, how are we breathing? And then take your left hand forward, half moon pose. Slide the hand a foot or so in front of your left toes. Maybe it's further. 
No need to get out your ruler, right? You know what helps you feel stable. Soften through your toes, and if you follow, um, remember that it's called yoga practice, not yoga perfect. Hand comes to your hip. From there, maybe you bend your knee. Reach back, capturing the foot as an option. If you have your foot, kick your foot into your hand. Have a gentle arching of the back. Breathe three, two, and gently step it back. Release the foot. Come on back, reverse your warrior. Inhale, plant your hands on your mat. Stepping on back, three-legged downward facing dog. Take the leg high, open up your hip. Both knees are bent, so even the standing leg bent. And then we get lower to the ground, we take a seat, and then we think to ourselves, do I want to be here, or do I want to do the flip dog? So if you're optioning for a flip dog, push into your feet, reach up, and stretch the arm overhead. Sit back down onto the floor, stay as long as you'd like, come on back. Downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in. Big exhale out. Mm. Inhale forward to a high plank pose. And then when you exhale, we're going to lower all the way down to the floor. Once you get down to the floor, okay, nice and low. Relax. Take a cheek to the mat. Gaze off to one direction. I personally always like to bend the elbows, stack my hands, and rest my cheek on the back of the hands feels more comfortable for my neck, but if you feel like hands at the sides and relaxing, there's lots of ways to approach belly pose. Now draw your chin onto the mat. Take your, le your, um, take your left hand forward in front of you, then bend just your right knee. Capture your right foot with your right hand. Half bow pose is next. Kick the foot into the hand and begin to lift your left leg and left arm up. This one is a challenge. We have to find a balance of lifting, keep breathing, and then release down. Stacking your palm on top of palm, possibly resting the other cheek on the mat. Arms can be resting at your sides, palms face up as well. Be a gentle shimmy of your heels back and forth. And the chin comes onto the mat. Sending your right hand forward, switching sides. Left knee bends, heel draws in. Reach back, capture your left foot. Half bow on this side. This time, let's try the opposite. Lift your arm and your legs for your right arm and your right leg first. Then kick into your left hand with your left foot. Lift just a touch more, and then we relax it down. You can stack the opposite cheek on the mat, maybe a heel sway in side to side. Chin comes onto the mat. Have your hands resting at your sides, palms face up. Bend your knees, draw heels in towards your seat. Bo Dhanirasana is next. Reach back to capture your feet or your ankles with your hands. For bow pose, begin to kick your feet into your hands, lifting up the chin, chest, and heart. And then if it feels available, start to float your knees up, your thighs up off the ground, the toes lifting up, and we can roll forward towards the abdomen a bit. Release very gently down, flip the opposite cheek to the mat, take a moment to breathe. Also bring your mind into your body and notice how you feel in your back, your spine, And then chin comes back onto the mat. One more bow pose. Draw heels in. Reaching back to capture the feet. If the feet aren't available, no worries. Reach back as far as you're able to. Inhale, we'll lift up. If you're kicking your feet into your hands, kick as much as you can to open up the chest a little bit more. Then when you can't really kick any further, then we're going to try to roll forward, but always listening to our bodies. Breathe deeply in. And exhale, release it on down. Opposite cheek rests on the floor. Close your eyes, melt into your mat. Try to surrender a little bit by just let your body be heavy, let the mat hold you.
Beautiful. Let's bring the hands underneath the shoulder. And we'll come up really slowly. And then onto the knees. Sweep your heels out to the sides of you. And then come to a seated position. When you arrive in a seated pose, we'll be moving into practicing and working into bridge pose. And then after we get set up in bridge pose, we're going to do a little bit of a workshop on the wheel pose. So let's just start with um, kind of getting the spine ready. So the first thing we'll do is set the feet hip width apart. In bridge pose, I don't recommend trying to reach for your heels because if you have a really long torso like I do, that actually aligns the heels way too close in. So the angle is actually kind of awkward and it also compresses the low back instead of creating space. So what I'd like for you guys to do is look around like the side of your body and try to bring your heel and ankle underneath your knee um, and just kind of find that like beautiful sweet place. So from there, we'll press evenly to the feet and we're gonna do some pelvic tilts. So begin to tilt your pelvis upward. The tailbone lifts, right? And then the low back presses down. And all I want you to do is think about lifting your tailbone a little bit up. Now press it back down towards the floor, relax that pelvic tilt. The pelvic tilt gets a little bit bigger. We're lifting the tailbone or maybe we're lifting the sacrum, that lowest kind of flat part of the spine, lower that back down. Another pelvic tilt leads us a little higher. Maybe now you're lifting your low back off the ground and then lower that all back down. You get where we're going. So we're pelvic tilting and this time we're lifting and maybe now the mid back lifts up a little bit and then you lower back down. Let's do that one more time. Lift up, see about lifting higher. Now lower everything back down. Once we get ready for the um, bridge pose, I'd love for you just to find that there might be five or six stages for your body and find that sweet place that's not too much and not too little. So let's all begin by having the palms face the better sides. Start tucking your triceps underneath you already. You'll notice that your chest is puffing up towards the sky, um, which is a really nice alignment for that beautiful bridge pose. Now start to pelvic tilt and lift the hips up off the mat. From there, maybe you tuck your triceps and arms under you even more and interlace your fingers. Press evenly through your feet. Lengthen your spine by drawing your knees forward towards the front of your mat. Chin is pointing straight up towards the ceiling. Try to avoid looking at your screen right now. <laughs> yeah, even if it's tempting. Keep lengthening your knees forward and then see if you can like lift a little higher. It's okay to use your glutes. Like sometimes if you use your glutes, you feel better. And sometimes you use your glutes too much and it feels too tight. So we want to find that like Goldilocks glutes, not too much, not too little. Let's release the hips down slowly to the floor. Take your arms out from underneath you and then lower, um, rock your legs back and forth. <laughs> All right, I'm just thinking about the three bears right now. And I'm also starting to think about porridge. I'm not really sure why that's coming into my mind. Just kidding, the story, right? All right, you guys, so what I'd like for you to do is if you can come up to a seated position for just a moment so I can show you a couple of things when we're doing our, our wheel pose. So <clears throat> in wheel pose, if you guys can do me a favor, take your arms above your head. So wheel pose, it's often to tuck your hands behind your shoulders so that the fingers face the front of the mat. The only problem here is the angle at which we have our elbow makes our, our upper body extremely weak. So what I like to do instead is slide the hands up higher. So I want you to find your earlobes with your thumbs. So touch your earlobes to your thumb and then bring your hands at that height. And if you were to look at that from the side, now I have the ability to really use my upper body strength because I don't have such a harsh bend at the elbow. The other thing is, is you could take your hands a little bit wider and then allow your elbows to kind of splay away from your breastbone to help you push yourself up into your, um, your wheel pose position. So have your thumbs in line with your earlobes, and then just imagine that you're pushing the floor away from you and kind of feeling what muscles would work. Now, if you tuck your hand all the way underneath, try to push the ground away from you. Do you notice how it's like you get stuck, right? So sometimes it's not even about that we don't have the power for wheel or we're not capable. It's mainly that we just need to adjust this so that we can use better architecture and better structure to move into that position. And the other thing that I personally like to do is come up as much as I can into a bridge pose and then your spine is already ready and then all we do is just kind of push ourselves up as high as we can. 
Last thing I'd like for you to really try today is avoid resting your head onto the floor. Um, if you put pressure on your head, depending on your neck and with modern technology, necks are more compromised. Um, it might give you a little bit of discomfort after yoga. Nobody wants a neck ache. So let's just be mindful. We're going to push up, but try not to rest your head onto the floor. And then you can come back down by tucking your chin to your chest. Once we get started into this pose, though, I'd really like for you to commit to looking straight up at the ceiling and try not to look over at the screen because we as well, we don't want to have a neck pain. Um, I want for you to, your bosses and your kids are the only pain in the neck, not your yoga class, right? <laughs> so I'm just kidding. All right, let's set up for that bridge pose. Make sure that your heels are underneath your knees. <clears throat> and then from there, we're pressing into the floor and lifting the hips up. We're not tucking the arms underneath because we're taking the hands behind us. Align your thumbs, like find your earlobes and align your hands by your earlobes. You might notice that your hands don't come completely down to the floor. From there, start to push into your hands and see if you can lift up a little bit. Maybe you lift all the way up and your heart is pressing towards the back of the room. And where you are is perfect. Maybe you try lifting up a couple more times. If you're in the wheel, try to breathe. See if you can stay for one breath longer than you think you can. That's when the pose is just beginning, when we want to get out of it. Take one more inhale. On the exhalation, chin comes to the chest a little bit, and we lower down slowly. Now, roll out your wrists. Okay. Take your hand and massage your form like you're squeezing out the last bit of toothpaste out of a toothpaste tube. Do that to the other side. And we're going to give that wheel pose one more try. Start with your lower body, lift up into the half bridge, take your hands behind you, make sure that you know that your elbows are okay to splay out to the sides of the room, press down into your hands and see if you can lift yourself up a little bit. Bring your heart towards the back of the room, keep breathing. Maybe if you're in wheel pose, you try to linger a little longer. If you're complete, you can come out. Take those still in wheel pose, see about one more breath. What happens when you stay for another breath? You might notice the intensity starts to soften as you keep breathing. Right, and then when you're ready to, let's all come down. A little windshield wiper action with the knees. Bring the bottoms of your feet together. And then take a moment to roll up your wrists. If you'd like to give a little massage to your forearms, you're squeezing that toothpaste all the way out of the tube. And then hold your own hand and draw your hand away from your elbow to decompress the wrist. Squeeze out the other forearm. And then hold your own hand and lengthen. Hands can come at your sides, palms face down. Close your eyes. I think that's a very powerful practice of yoga is that yoga gives us the ability to remember that we can hold our own hand. That we are so resilient and even in there are times where things get really heavy and dark and challenging. We may fall into a feeling of feeling depressed, really anxious. Feelings of uncertainty or hopelessness can have us in a state where we forget our resilience. We roll out our yoga mats, we get present, we breathe, we challenge ourselves to explore our edge a little. And then something magical happens, we remember who we are. We remember that historically we've gotten through all we've gotten through. We still hear, we are resilient, we bounce back. All the pain and the challenges that we've worked through, we've worked through. Right. So when doubt starts to creep into your mind, see if you can shift your attention to your breath and feel the life rising in your body. And when you exhale out, you don't have to exhale out the doubt, but what you could do is you could just create some space. When the fear starts to creep in, you take a deep breath in and you pause. When you exhale, you just give a little space. Worry creeps in, we take a deeper breath in. When we exhale, we give ourselves space. We give ourselves space to come back, come back home to the truth that we can get through, we are resilient. One more breath in here. And when you exhale, draw your knees back to center. Once your knees come back to center, you're gonna rock and roll yourself up and down. When you come up and down, we're gonna move back towards the downward facing dog so that we can come into our half pigeon pose. 
Half pigeon pose, we start with the right leg up to the sky in your downward dog. When you exhale, draw your knee forward and rest your shin across your mat. I invite you to keep your heel very close to your left hip bone for the most safe position for your knee. And then from there, we're gonna tuck the back toes under. Lowering the hips down. If you have like a blanket, a pillow, or a yoga block, you could set that under the right hip. Start to come down onto the elbows. And in that child's pose that we did earlier, we have the option of flipping the palms face up. Maybe your palms are up to the sky. Or maybe the forehead is down to the floor and you take your fingertips to the back of your shoulders. Maybe it feels okay to bring your hands into a prayer position behind you. And as we breathe deeply, allow this space, this breath, this moment to be a reunion with the truth of your resilience, of your strength, your courage, the faith in yourself becomes stronger as we breathe and we get present. The fear, the worry, the uncertainty starts to fade into the background as you breathe into that truth and you create some space. Maybe it becomes like noise in another room. You know it's there, but you don't have to tune into it. Three more deep breaths. Make them your deepest breaths yet. Consciously invite in the inhale. Explore and welcome the relief of the exhale. Inhale, welcome the breath. Exhale, all of it out. Now rise up slowly onto your hands, taking your time as you journey back towards your downward facing dog and you pedal out your feet a little bit. The left leg is lifting high, draw your left knee forward. Tuck your back toes under, scoot the foot back. And then ease on down. Maybe we're on elbows. Maybe the arms are stretching forward and the palms are face up. Forehead can come down towards the floor and maybe we're reaching fingertips towards the back of the shoulders. We're taking it into a reverse prayer position. Breathing life and energy into the part of us, that inner light, that inner fire, that has faith in ourselves, that knows that this too shall pass, that believes fully in resilience. That more will be revealed. When we get there, we'll know what to do. We don't need to pre-plan what we're gonna do, but when it comes, we'll know. Breathe a little deeper. And we have three more deep breaths. Take one more inhale. When you exhale, feel yourself exhaling all that you no longer want to carry that doesn't serve you in this moment, serve your physical health, your mental or emotional well-being. See and feel yourself set it down. And then rise up onto your hands. Instead of downward facing dog, we're simply shifting off to the left hip, taking the right leg around. Bring the soles of your feet together. 
Baddha Konasana, slide the heels in comfortably towards you. And on an inhalation, we're going to lift up through the heart and the chest. It's kind of a sweet place where you can keep your eyes closed as you fold forward. With eyes closed, you start to tune in to the inner environment. In Chinese medicine, they use um, acupuncture and other techniques in which to free the flow of energy. And it's also believed that if the physical body, the muscles and the connective tissue or the fascia become too tight, it will um, create an experience of certain emotions like worry, anxiety, fear, hopelessness, depression. And I don't know if it's true or not, but it's kind of interesting to note how you feel when you've taken time to really stretch your muscles, to expand and create more openness in the connective tissues and more space. It does that help us to feel a relief from some of those emotions? Maybe, maybe not, but just something to ponder. When we do feel overwhelmed, what if we take time to stretch and just create some physical space? And if it works, we can keep trying. We can keep bringing it into our practices, into our, into our lifestyle. On an inhale, let's lift up. Draw your knees together. Take your hands behind you with your fingertips facing forward. Draw your shoulders back. And then press into your feet. Lift up through your breastbones. Really open up through your chest first. Now press into your feet and lift up. And then lower your hips down to the floor. We'll take the same thing, or if you want a little bit different intensity, you can have your legs straight. Upward facing plank pose is an option, or tabletop, press into the feet, lift up. This time we're gonna hold until we wanna release. Okay, and then ask yourself if I can stay for one more breath. Can I stay? Okay, keep breathing. And then when you're ready to, you can release down slowly out of the pose and draw the knees into the heart. Take a moment to lower down onto your back and letting go. Knees drawn to chest, grabbing the big toes of the two-piece fingers for a variation of happy baby pose today. If looping the big toes does not feel good, place the palms on the soles of your feet. We can also option to modify and have the hands on the shin keeping the gaze up at the ceiling. Rocking side to side is one option. Sometimes just finding stillness also feels like a sweet option. Draw your knees in towards your chest. Taking the arms out like a capital T. Here you can keep your knees together like this, or you can take twist of root for your spinal twist, crossing your right leg over your left leg. Drop your knees to the left side of the room. I allow the right shoulder to lift up off the mat to begin with, and then allow the right shoulder to come down a little heavier. It does not have to touch the floor. If you want a little release for your neck, you can start to turn your chin further to the right until you feel the sweet stretch. Coming back to the center, taking the left leg around and softly gaze to your left hand. As you drop your knees to the right, be okay with allowing your right shoulder blade and shoulder to lift up off the floor. And then if you want to let that arm become heavy and just surrender to gravity, see if you can soften a little more and surrender to the gravitational pull of the earth. Just let gravity help you deepen. Come back to the center. When you arrive at the center, you'll unwind the legs. Maybe today you keep your knees bent and you knock the knees together, relaxing your arms at your sides close to your hips. 
maybe today you stretch one leg along and then the other, let the feet be wide and the toes drop away from the center line of the mat. You can also rest the hands on the torso if that is comforting for you. Begin to soften the effort to resist gravity and allow gravity to help you to feel heavier to sink a little deeper down into your mat and down into the floor. Imagine that you're surrendering so much to this moment that you're sinking down through the floor. Feel your mind, whatever quality your mind is in right now, if it's busy or chill, just notice it without any judgment. Try not to stop your thoughts, just observe yourself. Observing what comes into your mind. And then let's shift what we observe and observe the sensation of heaviness in the body. When a thought rolls in, and it might, it will. We notice the thought and we shift our thinking, our mind, our awareness to the feeling of our body sinking deeply into the floor. We keep sinking and sinking. We redirect our mind over and over again to feeling the heaviness, the surrender to gravity. We might start to notice it feels like Mother Earth is pulling us closer to her bringing us closer into her embrace, sinking heavier and heavier. Keep your body heavy on the floor. Eyes can stay closed and body can remain still. Begin to bring your awareness into your body and just notice how it feels to be physically still. How your body feels surrendering heavily into the floor. And as we lie here, just acknowledging the sweetness and the relief of having practiced yoga I want to share with you a poem by Donna Folds that's called Allow. There is no controlling life. Try corralling a lightning bolt, containing a tornado. Dam a stream and it will create a new channel. Resist and the tide will sweep you off your feet. Allow and grace will carry you to higher ground. The only safety lies in letting it all in, the wild and the weak. Fear, fantasies, failures, and success. When loss rips off the doors of our heart or sadness veils your vision with despair, practice becomes simply bearing the truth. In the choice to let go of the known way of being, the whole world is revealed to your new eyes. Start to wiggle your toes and wiggle your fingers. Stretch your arms long above your head. Take a beautiful second morning rise for the day. Bend your knees and draw the heels in. Let's roll over to the right side. And then come up slowly to a cross-legged seated position. Bring the hands together at the heart center. When we practice allowing, we must be willing to set down our stories about what we thought was going to be and allow it to be what it truly is. And as we move off our mats today, let's create space for this allowing, this ability to see with clear eyes and open hearts. Take a deep breath in. On the exhale, with gratitude, gently bowing forward. Namaste.